Thanks very much, Minister, for joining me today to talk about the Youth Commission on Alcohol. It's a pleasure. So can I just ask you, why is there a Youth Commission on Alcohol? Well, there's a Youth Commission on Alcohol because we felt it was really important to hear the voices of young people on the subject of alcohol. I think there can be a tendency in debating alcohol for, to see young people as the, as the problem uh, rather than necessarily about young people coming up with some of the solutions. So we always invited young Scott to help us talk to young people around the, the consultation on alcohol, but I felt there was something more that could be done, more in depth, and that's why we felt the Youth Commission would be a good way of doing a longer piece of work and getting the views from young people about what they think we should be doing and what had to be done to tackle alcohol misuse in Scotland. We are Scotland's Youth Commission on Alcohol. We've travelled from Ayrshire to Orkney undertaking investigations and even been as far as Sweden and Estonia. I read about it in the newspaper, like my local newspaper, and then I applied to Young Scott. It came on our university website about the position. And here we are. <laughs> Here's a kind of snapshot of what we've done uh, on the Youth Commission for Alcohol. <laughs> Katie. Uh, and I'm Ryan and we're here today at uh, St Andrew's House in Edinburgh and we're here to interview the Chief Medical Officer for Scotland, uh, Dr Harry Burns. I'm just ask him some questions about alcohol and what he thinks we should be recommending. Hi Dr Burns, um, can I ask you what impact does alcohol have on the health of the people of Scotland? There are, we reckon, in excess of 3,000 deaths a year, that's about 10 deaths a day occurring in Scotland due to alcohol. On top of that, there's all the misery it causes in terms of injury, chronic illness, psychological illness. About half of all suicides, particularly occurring in young people, mm. occur in people with a history of recent excessive alcohol consumption. It's killing lots of people. It's killing people at a younger age than cancer and heart disease. But in the process, it's causing a lot of misery that leads to domestic violence, broken homes, suicides, mental health problems. And it's very difficult to quantify a lot of that. Mm -hmm. But from what we can see, it's potentially causing indirect harm to to Scottish economy, somewhere two, three, four billion pounds of damage each year. Tonight we're going on a police patrol on the streets in Glasgow. I'm expecting to see quite a lot of drunk people, to be honest. Um, and I think it'll just be quite shocking. I think it'll show us like what is actually happening. And it might give us some clues of how we can try and prevent that. And, and Strathclyde Police has came a long, long way. And the current approach that we have with, with young people, it's not about Big Brother's going to tell you what to do and, you know, and barking at people. You know, it's all about education, it's about putting them in touch with the relevant authorities that can help them as well. We're going to get, out, get you out in patrol, let you see the effects, try and pick up some of the effects you, that, that uh, alcohol <laughs> has in young people. So we'll look at licensed premises, we'll look at the areas where young people hang about drinking and we'll get you up to the CCTV uh, monitoring station where you get a chance to actually see the effects of that on the streets. Sort of focus on it was on the sort of health aspects of it, and um, that's what really got me interested. And in I see um, in my sort of line of work a lot of patients um, with sort of drug and alcohol problems, and I see the effects it can have on them as well as a, their families. And that was the initial reason why I thought you know I'd like to sort of be involved in a positive way as to how to sort of change Scotland's culture with alcohol. Um, but since I got part in a, a round table event, it was with the Guardian and Drink Aware. Um, talking about young people in relationship with alcohol. Um, I was down at the House of Lords um, and I took part in a debate about young people and sort of like celebrities and how they influenced and there was alcohol came up in that as well. Um, was that scary? It was, it was quite scary, yeah. Um, there was a lot of different young people there and 
it was just it was so very formal and they say it was informal but it was really quite formal and it was freaky, it was really scary. Um, I've also been involved with, I was at the Brussels trip which was really interesting because it was interesting to see the different um, relationships that they had with alcohol in comparison to what it's like in Scotland um, and how it's not such a big issue there like it is here. Um, been involved in loads of things. I was on Radio 1 as well talking about Youth Commission and Alcohol. So Everything that I've done has been really, really good and without this, without sort of the Youth Commission I wouldn't have been able to take part in any of it because I wouldn't know where to start. I think the thing that probably benefited me was uh, when we were in the Royal is it, Academy for the Physicians in Edinburgh. Uh, where we were looking at the social marketing and how much influence the alcohol industry actually has on that. I found that quite interesting and how when you go on Facebook and that, that there's adverts for Carl and that and you don't, you're taking it in automatically, it's almost as though it's not there but you're like seeing it and you're like, I fancy a drink of that or whatever, something in my line the lines. But I think we've done, we've covered quite a lot, I mean, we've been looking at all sorts. Uh, um, meeting lots of different people from different agencies as well as um, like like different voluntary agencies as well as um, like government agencies and the NHS and things like that um, and yeah the best thing that I've done was probably oh most people would say it'd be the Sweden and Brussels the Sweden and Estonia trip and that was great but I also liked a lot of the things we've done here that have actually taught us about different systems in Scotland and how things work in Scotland and alcohol policy and alcohol's effects in Scotland um, and all the different meetings that we've been to and important people we've talked to <laughs> and things. Nothing surprised me apart from how s simple things that seem really complicated like the way that um, policy is made and things like that it seems really complicated and I suppose it is complicated but if someone talks in plain English about it, you can understand it and it makes everything a bit more interesting and accessible. I've been working in the advertising and social marketing work streams and um, that was what I was interested in. So I went and saw all the uh, alcohol advertising people. There's no limit to how much of this advertising that young people are being exposed to. That's a We've just been talking with a woman who works for Bebo and she's been telling us loads and loads of really like technologically advanced things that we could be doing, like different apps and things that you know buzz on your phone when you walk into a pub and all that type of thing. So we're coming out kind of buzzing with all these thousands of ideas really about how to harness all this different technology. So right now we're on our way to the Portman Group and I was wondering where everyone else has gone. Well they're behind us, this there, that side. Um, yeah, so it's just really kind of like interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing how we can like think about that. I didn't think I would ever do anything like this. If it's younger people that's doing it, we've seen the problems more than the older people, if you know what I mean. I've not seen older people like... The older Twenty people. Years. Yeah, and we are, we are like the next generation anyway, so the, the recommendations that we put forward now, by the time we are legal to drink, then they'll probably start going into place, hopefully. Maybe we should recommend that... That's what you would it should be, yeah, it should be charged 25 when the government being handed out. Yeah, as it were. It's different from a ban on advertising. Okay. Two separate things. And setting up a central fund that the industry would contribute to rather than within social marketing themselves. The industry will argue that they do that anyway through drink aware. So drink aware is an independent charity. So they give funding but they don't get involved in the governance of it all. So they're just going to turn in and say like that, that's an empty recommendation. Uh, I think that should, um, the number of people should be taken out and that should be made 1B, because that, that's just almost, and take out the last. A lot of people have said when we spoke to the peer education group that see the one that started just with parents mm -hmm. was really, really effective. So maybe it's mm -hmm. like a whole population, but more targeted yeah. advertising so that it covers all bases. Also put in working for alcohol abuse and intervention surgery delivered by health professionals, it's not all, all in one, it's just two separate parts to make it more yeah. clear. Yeah. A and B are pretty much the same, it's effectively compulsory ID if you're buying our <laughs> 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 Is it just the young stuff that has a pack? Well obviously the youth 
Planning Commission was started by the government about a year ago, and since then we've done loads of research. We've met with experts from the industry and from the government, and what really came across is that alcohol isn't just a young person's issue, it's a whole cultural, a whole population problem. And as such, the solution to that should also be whole population and nationwide. And young people should be involved in finding that solution, and they want to be involved, and that's obviously what we're here to prove and what we have proved. It's really important that young people do get their say and that they want to share it and just that they do, because, I mean, the amount of work we've done over the past year, it just shows how much influence young people can actually have to change society and the culture if they really wanted to. We can make the change and make it positive. That's what I think. I'm looking forward to receiving the, the results. I know that there's been a lot of work done by the Youth Commissioner. I'd want to put on record my thanks because uh, perhaps reaching audiences that we don't reach through Facebook and Bebo and so on, uh, really engaging with young people about the issues. So uh, I think the findings and the recommendations will be really, really interesting and of, of great use to us as a government. It's a good time as well because the alcohol bill is, is going through Parliament. There'll be a lot of debate and attention around the issue of alcohol misuse. So the timing of the Youth Commission's recommendations will fit very well into the wider debate. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll be welcoming the report and uh, very keen to take forward recommendations that are made. We are the Youth Commission. Thanks for listening. Guys, guys.